Welcome to episode 2.6, y'all. Shout out to my loyal listeners. Happy to have you all for the first time as well. And I bid farewell to y'all last time listeners. Today, I'm joined by a musical genius. Nicknamed Mr. Goldfinger, he's most likely spanked the keys on a song attached to one of your favorite memories. This classically trained composer creatively balances his gospel roots and jazz influences with his love for everything contemporary. His eclectic musical bag has made him a highly sought after musician by everyone, including Solange, Josh Stone, John Legend, Miguel, The Roots, Christina Aguilera, D'Angelo, Michelle and Dege Ocello, Lauren Hill. I mean, the list is endless and the show is only 40 minutes. So allow me to introduce a man who contrary to his name comes across as pretty jovial and likable, the one and only keyboard chameleon, Ray Angry. Thanks for having me. Welcome. What an introduction. I love that intro. I'm going to have to use that. <laughs> I'm going to have to sample your voice in the track. <laughs> Listen, it will be an honor. Let me know. Let me know. But I'm happy. I'm happy you're joining me all the way from Brooklyn. Yeah. So, you know, usually, you know, this is the part where we pour out the liquor, but it's early for you. So you on the water, I guess. We're going to pour the water, the H2O. I'm going to be like you. I had the water. I had I had the rum to my left and the water to my right. So I knew which one to grab. Right. So water. It yeah. Is. Thank yeah, goodness there's no be... rum in there. <laughs> it's gonna be a hell of a sh hell of a ride today, y'all. <laughs> I mean, it's not too late. We'll see. We'll We're see. going in today. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So I still want to, you know, loosen us up a little bit. So I'm gonna hit you with some random rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Climb a mountain or jump off a cliff. Hmm. <laughs> Climb a mountain. You're in the East Coast. Tim's or slides? Ooh, Tim's. A song you worked on but never got credited on. Ooh. <laughs> this uh, is the time to call them out. Uh, damn. Shit. Uh, I may have to come back to that. Oh, coming. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to come back to that. It's hard for me to. If it comes to you, you could tell me. Because if because if it came to that, I always, Sued them. you know, was like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> Spoke what's up. Yeah. Analog or digital? Ooh, analog. Why? This is why. <laughs> you can touch it. You know, digital digital is cool, but um, I like touching knobs. You know, I like you know, I like touching a device. Whereas digital is just everything's in the box, everything's in the computer, and plus, mm -hmm. plus there's a different sound. But what about when you're recording? When I'm recording? Yeah, like if you're recording vocals with an artist and you're producing, because analog means you have to get it done in one take, right? Yeah, yeah. So we don't just trust that with everyone, right? Thank God I've been blessed to work with some amazing, amazing people. So not everything is analog, but yes, you're right. When I recorded my album, it was all analog. So that means the tape was running, let's go. You know, so it was cool because we did everything in one take. Wow. I love digital because if I'm at the airport and I need to mix a record or if an idea comes to me, I can just open my computer, pull out my little keyboard and just start composing or mixing away. And tape gets expensive too. You know? I get you. What's the most adventurous thing you've done? It was the Britney Spears, Khalees, collaboration we were on tour with Britney Spears and we were in New Zealand where apparently they never see a lot of black people so not only was I in New Zealand it, and people thought I was Buster Rhymes you know what I mean it's it's so funny I had long That's dreads. so random oh you yeah. had dreads I had long dreads oh, okay. so they I went into the footlock and they're like Buster Rhymes and I think I got some 
free sneakers. Free shit. Yeah. yeah. And I went skydiving, skydiving in New Zealand. And have you, yeah. would you ever do it again? Oh, absolutely. I was trying to get Khalees to come with me. She almost went with me. She was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And then the morning of, she was like, nah. Nah, I'm that's cool. Chill. I'll wait for you down there. <laughs> um, a song or melody that's been playing in your head all week. Ooh. You're conveniently next to your keyboard, I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, welcome to my my song, Welcome to My Life, Don't Shoot. <laughs> yeah, that's that's song. But how do but how does it go? It goes, uh, don't get stressed out. Mm, 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 mm. This too shall pass. Don't get stressed. That's all you get. Okay. <laughs> um, I can, I, that's catchy. Favorite venue yeah. in the world to perform in? Oh my God. Favorite venue, Carnegie Hall. Oh, bougie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is prestigious. Carnegie Hall. That would be my favorite. Sorry. But for it to be your favorite, you've done it a few times, huh? I've played it a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, a little light work. But you know, actually, one of my favorite venues is Brooklyn Bowl. Okay. You, are you familiar with Brooklyn Bowl? A little bit. I'm more of a Hollywood yeah. Bowl girl, you know. So. Yeah. Yes, Brooklyn Bowl. It's like bowling and music. It's a cool. Oh, vibe. it's literally bowl. Yeah. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, the Hollywood Bowl is nothing like that. No, no, no. The Hollywood so, Bowl. Is so that's why I was surprised when you said they were bowling for real. I was like, oh. Can't lie. I've had some incredible memories of the Hollywood Bowl. We did the Roots. Um, uh, things fall apart live at the Hollywood Bowl. That was amazing. It's nice outdoors. Yeah. It's it's a beautiful situation, but I mean, yeah. it's a different vibe, yeah. you know. Yeah. But Carnegie Hall is definitely my favorite venue. Okay, yeah. uh, how important is fashion to the angry lifestyle? Mm, very important. You can't, you can't tell right now because I'm in my workout gear, but I love fashion. I love yeah, absolutely love fashion. I like mixing it up you know i like wearing i guess you would call it high fashion i love wearing um sometimes i love wearing tom ford but also love you know i have a friend who's uh she has a, <clears throat> a clothing line in ghana so she makes these beautiful pieces for men um her name is hana so i love wearing that kind of thing which makes me look like uh like i'm like an egyptian god or something you know what i mean this really she's amazing that's how you want to feel when you hit a stage right yeah well shout out to hana so secret talent uh singing really yeah i mean you've backed up all these like incredible vocalists like how do you have you ever like grabbed a mic and sang background when I was a little kid, that was a I, long time my father, my father was a singer and um, he was, he was an incredible singer. I used to remember him listening to uh, James Cleveland because he, we grew up in, you know, singing gospel music and he would practice to the James Cleveland albums. And, uh, <clears throat> and so he used to always get me to sing, you know, and he always wanted me to play piano and sing, you know. I, I was just too shy to sing, you know what I mean? Because singing is so such a vulnerable thing. I do have this vision one day to do like a record where I'm singing um, this song uh, called The Good Life by John Dankworth. <laughs> you hide all the sadness you feel so that's going to be your coming out song as a singer yeah it's like a it's like a it's like a nat cole like you know frank sinatra sounding kind of thing so i, I imagine myself like singing that song with a cigar at a piano you know, bow tie, you know. Okay. And I'm gonna be like, I knew this was coming. <laughs> this is a question that might require a little bit of thinking, but maybe not. 
the last time you heard a song and thought this shit would be so much doper if I was on it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wait, uh, you mean like, okay, in which era? Well, I mean, I imagine with the old stuff, it's more kind of like, cause you, it's, as a fan, but I think with the new ones, it's really more about like your, hmm. let's go newer. Okay. I feel like that'll be more controversial, you know? We start some shit now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, that's, it doesn't that's mean good. it's bad. It just yeah, means yeah, you yeah. would have enhanced it. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Hmm, this is a very good one. This is, you know what I'll say? Let me see, hold on a second. Um, you know that new Khaled song with Nas? And Jay-Z? And, and Jay yeah. If I was on that, I would have really made that joint hotter. Yeah. I could see that. I could see. I could see how because it has that. If jam I was on that, if I was, if I were on that song, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would have put some fire on it. Yeah. Well, Khaled, get it together, bro. Actually, work with him. Oh, you know what? I'll say that. That's that's one. I did a I did a session with DJ Khaled, and he tried to not give me credit for those for the work that I did on his, on the song that we collaborated on together. The other day, I just realized that Meek Mills and Plies is on a song. But did you eventually get credited? I did. Right. I did, because um, cause a friend of mine, we have a mutual friend, Bink. You know, Bink is my guy. Bink knows him very well. And I think Bink was like, yo, man, raise my guy. He's a good guy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do right by him, you know? And and so I think that's, that's how that got fixed. Which song was it? It was, uh, it's called Shout Out to the Real. Thing I didn't do, I didn't do the beat. The engineer did the beat, you know? And Khaled mm -hmm. supervised him while he was on the beat, which is cool. I'm not saying I didn't have a good experience with him. I did, but there has to be a certain level of risk when rappers are dealing with real musicians. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like, my guy, it's great. You got jewels. When we get to this music, let's get to it. You know what I mean? Your amount of money does equal the the amount of work that I put in as an artist to hone in on my craft because you called me, I didn't call you. And plus, I mean, I see DJ Khaled as more of like a curator or an A&R. I don't, uh, to he me, is. he's just good at pulling he the is. people together, which is a great strength, but I would never thought he played this stuff. So it's weird to me that yeah. he would try to act like he would. No, it's not, you know, I have to clarify because um, it, it's not that he act like he, well, actually it is because, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, you know, I should be getting a producer credit, you know what I mean? Because I came up with it, I produced it, I wrote it, you know what I mean? So yeah. this discrepancy was um, the producer credit because a lot of guys um, feel like you're channeling their energy. I had a guy tell me that once, you know <laughs> what I mean? That's and funny. so he's a producer right. and I'm just a work for hire, which is very disrespectful language. But at the same time, everything is relationships. But I, you know, I didn't make a big deal of the Khaled thing. I said something to my boy, he's, you know, you know, he had a conversation and it was squashed. I see it as we are all the best and we are great when we are at our best and when we are, you know, helping each other be our best. You know what I mean? You like that? Yeah, that, I like that. Best. Deep. Let me ask you this though, because you worked with Lauren Hill and she's been plagued by similar accusations. Were you, you know where I'm going? Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know what? I will say this. I fucking love Lauren Hill. That's my fucking sister. She, um, I don't have not one bad word to, she's always supported me. And, and whenever I've done anything with her, it's always been, you know, we just have, when we get together, you know, it's just a natural, we just vibe. If she was in the room right now and I was playing something, she'd be like, we would just vibe and she would start singing. 
I just want to get that captured in the studio. Yeah. I, I hope that happens. Hope she listens to this. <laughs> I'm going to send this to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Random, are you following the NBA? Yes, somewhat. What's I went to my first game two weeks ago. To the Knicks? Uh, no, 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 no. I saw the, um, Nets. the Brooklyn Nets. Oh, that's dope. They were, they are fire. They are. I mean, New York. They are fire. Yeah. KD? Mm -hmm. I never knew. Yo, it's a tight little squad. I mean, right. I was hoping for a Lakers Nets final, but well, that's not happening. I know. But I must say, though, there are a lot of good teams playing well. I think the Suns deserve, I mean, they played well. The Nets, even the Knicks, like when was the last time they were in the play? So it's a Hawks. So I feel like it's not that the Lakers lost to a like a loser squad, you know, it's just like, you know, the Tigers are, are ready. But I will also say the Eastern Conference is a little weaker than the West. I think the competition mm -hmm. is not as tough. Mm. I think the Nets have an easier road to the yeah. finals than yeah. the Lakers would have had. Oh, okay. Think. But, but uh, the Nets... They are hitting the net. <laughs> how, how, how was the energy there? Was it? Was it? What? It was. <laughs> it was good. Are you vaccinated? No, not yet. I was in the section where the non-vaccinated people were, so they <laughs> they divide the stadium <laughs> into sections. Doesn't it remind so you of the civil rights up? movement? <laughs> like you just <laughs> like this. <laughs> I know. I know. Right? It's like that. All the vaccinated uh -oh. people are down below. Yeah, and let's pack. The the bleachers. <laughs> they seem like they have the better hot dogs. <laughs> right. <just> there. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. And you know the the messed up part is when you mention the food, everybody's in the same line. <laughs> There's it's no for, like. <laughs> it's for TV. It's for TV. Food. Where it's are hard. you originally see, from? So originally, I'm from Albany, Georgia. Oh, I grew okay. up in Miami, Florida. Yeah. Okay, so you're a southern boy. Yeah, my my yeah, my mother is from the Bahamas and my dad is from Georgia. Oh, so wow. I have the West Indian. You're you know, Bahamian. Southern. Okay, where's that accent at? I'm an island man. <laughs> you sound like the way I would say it. <laughs> that didn't even sound like a real Bahamian. <laughs> you sound like a bootleg Bahamian. <laughs> I know. I, I know. I know. I know. Kim Kardashian, right? So there's a clip floating around with her having a breakdown because she considers her, herself a failure because of her third divorce. Place and moved to Wyoming. I can't do that. He should have a wife that supports his every move and travels with him and does everything. And, and I can't. I feel like a failure that it's like a third marriage. Yeah, I feel like a loser. Do you feel it's fair to define a woman's identity based on whether or not her marriages fail? No. I'm the type of person I don't like I don't like to kick sand on people when they're down. In terms of Kim Kardashian, hey, listen, relationships are fucking tough. Mm -hmm. It's first of all, it's tough waking up in the morning and believing you can do what you think you ought you setting out to do. You know, or if you're like someone like her where she's employing so many people. I mean, she's got so she's got like a fucking brand. Like she's not a basic bitch. Like she's out here working. An she's got she's got company. She's got this. She just can't pick up. So there's something to be said for that. A lot of people don't, don't understand the pressure that it that you're under when you set out to be your own business and your own brand. Regardless whether you believe in her or not, or whatever your opinion is, to do anything that you love is fucking hard. And then you add another human being on top of that is very hard. What do you do when you, when you have everything, but the most basic thing which you can't buy, which is love and patience and forgiveness? But I think she's going to be fine. If we were looking at it from the male perspective of a man having three divorces, this wouldn't even be a topic. I feel like it takes a certain kind of bravery to keep believing and trying. Mm -hmm. There's so many men that have had like multiple divorces that it's not yeah. even a subject, you know? So I mean that's a that's a whole other conversation. Whatever he's got going on, hopefully he's cool. You never um, worked with Kanye? Never. I always wanted to work with him. I, you know who I would love to work with? I would love to work with Kanye, Bjork. At one point, I really wanted to work with Pink, but I think that's I think that's dead now. Why? But um, you know, she's she's like in a different place now. She's not touring. 
and making records as much as she was before. What do you mean? She just dropped a documentary from her last pre-pandemic tour. Really? Manifest uh, this. Start manifesting it, Ray. It's not that far. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's good to see that there are still some people on the list because you know your list is just ridiculous. Oh man, now, my list is so. very long. My list is very long. And then, like you know, I would love to work with the, the you know the London Symphony Orchestra. You know, and uh, you know, uh, anywhere. You're still young. There's time. Yeah. So Pharrell recently spoke about the murder of his cousin by police stating that he's 100% certain it wouldn't have happened if he was white and if the cop had the body cap on. You have two songs, Don't Shoot and The Protest that address police brutality. What prompted you to uh, express your grievances in this way? Okay, um, number one, the pandemic had just happened and I felt like I was really depressed and I felt like, man, the world is over. I re literally felt like, oh, what's the, it's, this, is, this is Armageddon. You know, revelation is here, the world is over. And then at some point I was like, man, fuck this shit. Let me go, let me go get back into the music. And then I started working out and I started practicing classical music and, and making beats on Instagram and just kind of just getting back into the swing of things. And then George, Floyd is killed by a police officer. And then I was like, you know what? I want to use my art as a voice of reason for this, for these, you know, these acts of terror. The pro, there was a huge protest on that happened in Brooklyn right after George Floyd passed away. And mind you, I had never, I never left my house. The first time I left my house was to go to this protest. And I went, I had my bike and which someone stole from Madison Square Garden. Fuck you, the guy that stole my bike, you motherfucker, you. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I'm on my bike and I go down to uh, this protest and I, I, first thing I saw was a police uh, van that was burnt to a crisp. And I was like, oh shit, it felt like a movie. Mm -hmm. And I see all these people yelling and it really did something to me. And I was like, oh shit, and you know, and the police are taking people, police are rounding people up, cornering people, taking them in. And so then I went back home, turned on Instagram Live, and I just played piano for like 30 minutes straight. So I was like, man, this guy's uh, letting yeah. it out. No, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, Tiffany Haddish is producing and set to star in a Flojo biopic. I know she's been working hard getting in track shape, but do you think that she has the acting chops to accurately portray the late track star? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I think so. You know, the thing about Tiffany, um, I have a lot of respect for her. And here's here's what here's why I say that. You know, I was doing um producer Mondays. I do producer Mondays every Monday. This particular time I'm playing, so common. <laughs> He's there, he comes on stage and Tiffany's is Tiffany is with him. So then she comes on stage. I'm like, you say, all right, cool. She gets on stage, yo, she killed it. But what did she do? She Hyper sang. She, she sang. sang. She sang and was vibing. She, okay, yeah. she's fearless. She killed it. Okay. Because most people, when they come to produce the Mondays, you know, the reason I do it is because it's like, yo, listen, we started from a clean slate. There's no cover songs. We just vibing, almost like we're in the studio. And some people, some people are very fearful. She did not give a fuck. She came on stage. Where do you, these, where do you host this night? It's at New Blue, New Blue 151 in New York and okay. uh, Lower East Side. With that kind of energy, I was like, yo, if she's got to study a script, mm -hmm. if she's got to go work out, I see her doing that. I love, you know, I love, I love Tiffany. And yeah. speaking of, you know, all things that she's been through, I mean, she's been very vocal about her uh, foster care upbringing and how she wants to improve that whole thing. So she just announced that she's in the process of adopting a child. Um, so, you know, shout out to her, man. I'm rooting for her. Mm -hmm. Cause I know yeah. that a lot of people underestimate because she profiles herself like very South Central, and, you know, there's certain like stereotypical things, but I, I I also believe that she is, you know, diligent and dedicated and. But you know, on the one hand, 
people always got something to say. True. When you're in a game, there's always people in the sideline. No, oh, yeah, you mother. They don't know what you did to get there. Yeah. They don't know your life story. All they know is the emotion that they're feeling. So, you know, I don't, I don't listen to people anymore. <laughs> what do you think about this whole uh, Naomi Osaka situation? You know, the thing about being a creative, I feel like athletes are creatives. You have to put time into your craft. A lot of times when you're dealing with people with money, you sort of feel like a slave to the system. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's actually, no, you actually need me for your ratings. I'm, I don't feel like it today. Yeah. I'm, I need, I'm tired, you know. Mm -hmm. I need to get ready for the game. Yeah, but we got our sponsors. It's your problem. You know what I mean? Good for her. Exactly. You know? Yeah, but it's like if they don't perform well, they also get criticized. It's exactly. Like, you know? Either way, they're going to keep talking. Give them something yeah. to talk about. She won't do press conferences. Boom. Yeah, and now they got negative press backlash because all these people all throughout the industry are in full support of Naomi. So now the they feel stupid so right it's, yeah. it's kind of backfiring on them and right you know who my you know who my fucking hero is who? dave Chappelle. oh yeah of course have you been to ohio to i had the pleasure of being there um a couple times perform with with the band with no name and uh we had some fun with d nice yeah you know, it was really cool dave is my hero you know why he's my hero People were talking shit of him. He stayed focused. When they were kicking him while he was down, he stayed focused. Now he's on top. It's not like he got money and he switched up. Like, yeah. He's still the same person. My only beef with him is that he he fucks up my last name. Because he can't believe my name is angry. How does he say it? How does he say it? Uh, on Greece, on Greece or some shit like that. On Greece, on Greece. <laughs> Ray on <laughs> Yeah. And plus he had been... He had been smoking. Yeah. He had been smoking drinking. and drinking a little bit. And he's like, Ray and Grease. I, I fucking love Dave Chappelle. Did you see yeah. the, the trailer for uh, Mary's upcoming documentary, My Life? I haven't seen it. You got to get away from that keyboard sometimes and live, Ray. <laughs> Ooh, oh, and I. The only thing I think that kept us guided was the music. It just saved you. Global superstar. Double Oscar nominee. Nine Grammy Awards. The queen of hip-hop and R&B. Mary J. Blige. Nobody sounds like her. When Mary sang, I heard the pain of a generation. In the neighborhood we lived in, it's like prison. There was a lot wrong and there was a lot I needed to get out. That's why I had that pen. Sleep don't come easy. My life is probably my darkest album. That's one of the darkest times I've had. Most of the times I was just depressed and didn't want to live. I had it all inside and I was able to sing it and write it. I didn't know that so many people felt the same way. She made it okay for people to say it's all right to be me. We still don't get to see that a lot, you know? Still. If you're here tonight and you're a Mary J. Blige, then you have been tested, you have been tried, and you have been proven. A lot of young black women could relate to where she came from. She gave us a face, she gave us a name. We did something really powerful by inspiring each other to want to live to see another day. crazy i used to be on tour with those guys i was working with a band called shy uh-huh did some shows with mary bill bib devoe it was al Heyman. it was those al Heyman tours al Heyman, the same uh, al Heyman that's with uh floyd mayweather yeah because he was oh. a music promoter this was in the 90s was this during different. the uptown days this was around the my life like, oh okay it was all yeah. chaotic huh howard university at its heights with Diddy and like 
the bling, everything was bling bling. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Bad boy was at 20. They were they were uh -huh. gone. They were like they, you know, they were running. Everything was everything was bad boy. Remember, he ran the 90s. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Early 2000s, for sure. Yeah. That sound. Yeah. But how was it musically? Like, did you also collaborate with her creatively or were you just like... A no, 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 no. During, during this time, this is when all the gospel musicians were becoming touring band, yeah. touring artists. Because everyone and, wanted uh, that sound. Mary had all the church cuts. It was a very interesting time for me, but I, I was never exposed to... Um, the whole R&B circuit. But when I got to Howard, that's when I got exposed to that. Yo, listen, Howard was the best experience of my life, especially coming out of out, out of high school because I went to an art school. I met so many incredible people. So your discography successfully illustrates your ability to adapt to various styles. However, all creatives find a way to insert their calling card into the mix. How would you describe the Ray Angry sound? Mm. Mm. I'm, uh, remember that commercial, the Midas touch? Yeah. So I would describe my sound as the gold finger touch. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause okay. I like, cause, cause honestly, I love so many different styles of music and I, and I would like to think that my sound embodies what it is to be a human being and to love music. So hopefully that's my sound is like, man, this guy sounds like he loves music, you know, but I truly, I truly do love folk music. I love jazz. I love, love hip hop. I just love music period. You know, that's great. You're passionate I love Ethiopian about food. I love Mexican food. Dude, I love like sushi. <laughs> you, know, you, know? you know, you know that my roots are Ethiopian, right? I, I didn't know that. Well, there I'm you just go. smart like that. See that's, that's, right. see, that's the gold finger touch. You yeah, know no, what I'm you, you tap, I just yeah. tapped in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, but um, also, I mean, I think musically, you'll, there's just so much for you. Oh, I, my yeah. God. Yes. Yes. The yes. instrumentation and stuff like that. It's very, like the, the, the traditional Ethiopian music is very jazzy, but then has it because we have our own instruments that don't exist yeah. anywhere else so it's yes. i can imagine for you it's even more exciting yes absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah so um after nearly 30 years of lending your magic to others you finally got around to dropping your solo effort the angry one comprised of 10 instrumental songs is there a track on there that sums up your musical journey melodically Ooh, you got some good questions um hmm uh new york city City is a vibe. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, you've worked with an impressive list of notable artists, but there's one that always goes out of her way to sing your praises and even calls herself your fan. His articulation is unbelievable. So I just kind of watch him sometimes and just enjoy him while we're performing live on stage as a fan. You know, I'm a fan of Ray Angry. To play on a Queen Latifah show, you have to play so many different styles of music depending on what I'm feeling or what the crowd is, is asking for. And so whoever's playing with me on stage has to be able to go there. Ray, it's like a day off to go there. It's fun to go there. So it's something that really made me want to not just work with him as, as a keyboard player or as a musical director, but really as a producer. Your, how did your working relationship with Queen Latifah come about? And what has stuck with you from that experience? Oh man, first of all, shout out to Dana. Dana Owens. I love her. I actually met her 
I think James Poyser invited me to join him on um, Keys for the Sugar Water Tour. Okay. So it was her, it was James Poyser, myself, Little John. Little John Roberts, not Little John Robert Roberts. Guy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Little John Roberts. Bass player extraordinaire, Adam Blackstone. Oh. So we're on tour and we're rehearsing and she, you know, she's just so cool and we're having fun and she got her conga next to the mic and she's like playing with the band and, and we're just having fun. And then she invites us to the studio. And so I go to the studio with her and just hit it off. I worked with her. Then I became the musical director because uh, Adam couldn't, Adam was doing like Beyonce and everyone else. We would spend a lot of time in the studio and then we were working on, she was working on her album. So I worked on an album with her and then my father passes away. And um, she called me up and I was at my parents' house and it was right after the funeral. And we spoke on the phone for about an hour. She, she really, she was like a big sister. She really like, she took the time out to really chat with me so giving and and so thoughtful i just love her she's dope she's dope you just mentioned your father he gave you the middle name sebastian after sebastian bach right because he's mm, classical yeah. music lover did you have any pressure to go the classical route when you were younger um my parents they didn't put any pressure on me, but I couldn't go certain places. <laughs> so, you know, they you had like a roomy box. Yeah, I couldn't just play for anybody. Gotcha. They they were very particular about who I got to play for. So with that being said, but they definitely um, made sure that I was always in church playing piano or organ. But I was in school and I was studying classical piano. So they just encouraged me to be the best and to really believe in, believe in what I was doing. So they, they yeah, they were very, um, very supportive. That's great. Is there a difference in your process between composing for an artist or a TV show? Ooh, it's different. Definitely, definitely different. For a TV show, there's more thought that goes behind it. There was so many um, different types of cues. And also the story is different. So you have to, you know, really be in the story. And for me right now, I'm working on um, a show that uh, Amy Schumer is, is um, about to release. And this is so, it's so it's good. A, that Caucasian it's, check. It's so good. And I'm working with a friend of mine, Timo Elliston. But yeah, but what- You just worked on Dropped Yesterday, right? Love Tales on BET Plus? Yeah. You didn't think yeah. I did that, huh? That's kind of cool too. That was cool too. Yeah. Shout out to Sidra. And I collaborated on that on that project with Cherry Lynn Carrington. She's a really good friend of mine. So when you're doing these um <clears throat> compositions for the TV shows like Love Tales or even The Shy, are you submitting songs you produced or are you like scoring and creating something custom for that show? Both. Whereas the Shy, they um the music supervisor loved one of my songs. And so he said, hey, man, I want to put this in, in the show. I'm like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Artists are a little bit different because not only do you have to know the story, but you have to sonically get inside of the artist's mind. Yeah. Right. You know, they might not like red. They don't want nothing red. They only want blue. So now you have to work with a blue palette or they might they might like purple and blue. And then you're like, okay, cool. You like this mixture of purple and blue? She's like, no, nah, it's too bright. I need more purple. Okay, cool. But I I love that because it's a different type of challenge. It's almost like, um, think of it like I'm figuring out a puzzle. It's always like, okay, I'm trying to, what's the code that I have to crack? Once you crack the code, then you're good. But um, I imagine along with you getting into the psyche of the artist, it also helps if they're also open to let you be creative and not just come with what they think out the gate, right? Yeah. I try to be mindful of, of how much I'm gotcha. being creative. You know what I mean? So when you look back, into your illustrious career, what is a moment you're the proudest of? The moment that I'm the proudest of? 
Yeah, I don't think I've hit. I don't think I've gotten to that point yet. Wow, that says a lot. That means uh, you're still no. hungry. Yeah, no, I'm not. No, I haven't reached that. Okay. Yeah. I want to have an impact, you know, and I want to uh, be more than just a piano player. I want to be more than just an artist. I want to be a whole creative being that is sort of like an inspiration for other creatives that will travel the path that I traveled or would encounter some of the things that I have. Well, you are well on your way. I mean, your name comes up so much. I'm surprised you had time to talk to me today. <laughs> I got time. What's next for Ray Angry? Like whose project is in the pipeline? I need an exclusive, damn it. <laughs> well, I'm working on a symphonic work right now. Okay. I, I um, with my creative partner, Catherine, we released a project called D Public Domain. And our first single is called Newborn Again, featuring Black Thought, Liv Warfield, Eric Gales is playing guitar, Daru Jones is playing drums, Matt Gumley's playing guitar. I'm playing organ B3 and I produced it. <laughs> Mr. Goldfinger music. So that's something I'm really excited about. So I'm looking to um, to collaborate with all sorts of people and create this, this label that's for the creatives, by the creatives, in transparency, giving creatives their, their credit, giving them their, their the money that they're owed, publishing, this, that, and the third. So I'm just trying to really do some good business um, practices for, for artists. Dope. And I'm also uh, producer Mondays. We I recorded an album of 27 songs with different artists. It's a vibe. It's it's crazy. Wow, 27 songs. Yeah, in six days. The session was curated. Wow. I had different people coming out of the studio. I'm sure there's some uh, impressive folks on. Oh that. my God, it's 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 a great record. It's a great record. Yeah. Well, um, we're almost at the end. So how can people? find you, learn more about you. My Instagram is at Ray Angry um, on Instagram, also at Producer Mondays. Um, my website is www.rayangry.com. Um, my Twitter is at Ray Angry. Uh, more importantly, the music is Ray Angry. It's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's on Tidal, it's everywhere, it's on Amazon, and support good music. Yes, and the name is not that hard, folks. <laughs> it's going to be hard to find. Um, well, I will say it was really a pleasure having you and thank you for being so open with me. Do you have any last words? Love over hate. I think I think every experience that you have in life makes you who you are as a person. I'm grateful for every experience I've had and more excited about the ones I'm about to have. So with that being said, I just hope that people are encouraged and inspiring each other to be great. Oh, that's so beautiful. My left eye is all watering. And if Bjork is listening and she's like, yo, I keep this guy keeps talking about me. Who the mm. fuck is this guy Ray Angry? And if she wants to know, what's up, Bjork? Let's go. <laughs> Listen, I love Bjork. I did an arrangement of her song, All Is Full of Love. Oh. And Bjork City is a flip of my arrangement. Please. 
Return this man's message. Yeah. He sent it out into the atmosphere. <laughs> Answer the call. Well, thank you so much, Ray. Yeah. Thank you for thank the you. positivity. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you all for tuning in. See you all next week. Do your speakers weekly? Shay get your liquor and unwind. Shay then you'll never be behind. I want to know you. Find me on Instagram and YouTube. Shay C H E Z R U. Follow, subscribe, invite your mama and your tribe, baby.